Origin just wants you to this is true facts, not dead opossum. Opossum? Opossums. And their weird defenses. But I'm so frank. Yeah, I guess there are animals who play dead, right? And it works, I guess, I don't know. There are humans who play dead when approached by bullies, apparently. So there you go. I guess we are animal after all. It's going to be interesting. True facts are always, like, <laughs> really interesting videos. So Frank feels like Seth's in tech, but of, like, the animal world. I've said that many times because his jokes always feels like that. And there's always multiple butt jokes. So it's going to be interesting. Let's watch it. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. So that way I know which type of videos to react to more. Check out the reaction. This link is season. And check out the end cards. It's the best way to check it. Yeah, that's what it. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. On a scale of one to dead, how dead is this opossum? Why do some snakes do this? Are they drunk? And will this opossum live to see another day? You're about to find out. I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't want to meet one of those in a dark alley. No, you need a nice bright alley so you can get a good look at that face. Looks like a number two pencil got busy with a werewolf butt. Sorry, got busy with a werewolf, but opossums like this one, cherry punctuation. But opossums That's like this one joke. are lovers, not fighters. And when I say opossum, I mean the ones in the Americas in the order Didelphimorphia, not the possums that live in Australia. Very different animals. Way to screw things up, Australia. There are 126 species of opossum, but only one lives in North America, the Virginia opossum. But down south, there's a woolly opossum, a big ear opossum, fat-tailed, short-tailed, even a four-eyed opossum. But you'll notice none of them are called the two-headed opossum. It wouldn't help distinguish them, because in all these species, the males have a two-headed penis. Now I can show you one, but only if you show me the one you're imagining first. <laughs> All right, we'll do a drawing, how's that? Now the opossum penis is like the double barrel shotgun of the penis world, split down the middle and each side connected to its own testicle, two shots. Surprisingly, science tells us this is not designed for nasal sex, but rather for the two vaginas and two uteruses that female opossums have up in their business. Now the signs that opossums are actually quite agreeable start early. Take a look at this opossum. Yeah, what I love about that, he's saying science tell us, not that it's not true or it's not for this reason. Science tell us. So it's like, we might discover more evidence in the future. So it's not accepting that 100% basically. Some sperm. Jerry, those are pool noodles. Thank you. I know what you're thinking. Two-headed penis, two-tailed sperm makes sense. But those are actually two individual sperm cells that came together. Inside the male opossum, when two sperm cells meet, they will often rotate around each other until they line up in a particular way, which causes the heads to stick together. But more importantly, for their tails to start beating in synchrony. When they start to do that, the pair can swim straighter and faster with less energy than All if they were work. alone. <laughs> and single unpaired sperm have a tendency to swim in circles. In any case, when a pair reaches an egg cell, they split apart, shake hands, and may the best sperm win sort of thing. This sort of collaboration happens in quite a number of animals. Here's bull sperm, for example. Here's ant sperm. Looks like two sperm gangs are about to rumble. The science hippies call it forming a sperm train. It's a good title for a movie. A buddy comedy. Two best friends wind up falling in love with the same girl. Or something like... Probably a Pixar movie. I can see that. Probably not. Many get on board, but only one will arrive. Sperm train. Coming soon. No, too obvious. Anyway, when one of these little bastards finally gets inside of an egg cell, that's when it starts to get stressful. This little blobule here only has about two weeks to grow inside of mama. Opossums are marsupials, and the rudimentary placentas they have aren't enough to protect the babies and keep them safe from their mother's immune system. So, these little parasites get kicked out early. Things start moving quickly around day 9, and by day 11, they look a bit like the love child of Charizard and Casper the Ghost. Looks like a Haunt Me Elmo doll. Like a space gopher. Looks like a tardigrade trick-or-treating as Barney. And by day 13, <laughs> it's time for these little zombie gummy bears to- Why? I, I just know for a fact that he probably has like much more names lined up for that, but that's the only one he used. He like can't use more than that. Leave. At this point, they're around the size of a bee and blind. But during development, a few things were fast-tracked to help with what happens next. Those cute little claws there are actually temporary and will fall off. But not until after they've helped the baby crawl unassisted from the birth canal to the mother's pouch. That's four or five body lengths, and they do it blind. 
Without sight, they rely on their precocious little snout to smell and feel their way to the nipples. Once they get there, they can use their surprisingly strong tongues to help latch on tight until the nipple inflates inside their mouth to form a tight keel. On average, opossum mummies have 13 nipples. In this case, 13 isn't unlucky. You know what it is? 14. Because opossums will sometimes have more babies than nipples. And in that case, it's sort of like a game of musical chairs. Except, you know, with nipples and to the death. Once they're safely inside the pouch, these flesh bees have time to turn into proper opossum babies. It's cushy in there, not really teaching them independence. And I'll say it, I mean, this is the sort of parenting that leads to spoiled children. You can draw your own conclusions here, but look what happens when they get big enough to leave the pouch. They go straight to the mother's back. And yes, it's cute, I mean, it's great for Instagram, but look at mom. Her face says it all. It's the mother of resting bitch faces right there. So eventually it's time to kick those little f***ers off and let them fend for themselves. <laughs> but the insane part is somehow he always finds a clip that he wants to show us, right? That clip was insane. Obviously, probably something else is going on there, but it just looks like it, like, mother's like, oh my god, I'm overwhelmed right now. I don't know how much fending you've done, but I can tell you that if you want to get your fend on, it does help to have some equipment. They have this bullwhip of a tail, covered with these scaly patches of keratin. And you could mess somebody up with one of those, whoopsh, take an ankle out. But they don't, no one bothered to teach them that. They end up using them to carry sticks and leaves back to the den. I mean, I guess they're good for balance, and when they're young, they can hang upside down on them. And by adulthood, they're too heavy. Oop, <laughs> didn't see the tree there? But even if they don't have a fearsome tail, they do have old man hands. Like they're born with the hands of a 70-year-old carpenter <laughs> with a nail fungus, <laughs> which somehow always seems to look like they're short a finger. They're not, and their back feet look even more like old man hands. They've got a little opposable big toe and butt cheek palms. <laughs> palms that are covered in friction ridges for maximum grippage. Makes for a memorable handshake, a foot shake, but not exactly a weapon. But who needs fearsome claws when you have those teeth, right? Oops, <laughs> looks like- Yeah, the great definition of it's not pretty, but it gets the job done, I guess. Like you got a little salad stuck in there. And if you're counting, there's 50 of them, the most of any land mammal. And they've got this bony ridge up top where really? muscles attach, so they can chew right through the bones of a mouse. But you can't bring a nutcracker to a fist fight, am I right? I am. And at the end of the day, all these open mouth toothy displays are mainly just bluster. So, overall, a bit short on the defense. I'm telling you, lovers, not fighters. However, let me tell you something. They can f***ing stand still. Like those dudes dressed up as the Statue of Liberty busking for change on the promenade sort of standing still. I'm talking mime level shit. You know what my mother used to say? A, B, C. Always be learning. Because she never learned how to spell. But it is true. And Brilliant.org is where you learn by doing. With thousands of lessons in math, data, and... Seriously, man. Just playing dad is an insane ability, right? Uh, you know, you... The ability to play dad is insane. I mean, try to stay still. Like, like mime. What is it? Mimes? What are they? Like, those are people who, like, play statues or some shit, right? And just like stay, you know, stable for like multiple hours. You can't do that like 15 minutes. Try it. Like that's insane. So ability to play dead, like really not move. And in, in wild where like predators have like insane senses. That is an OP ability to like really stay still. Analysis, programming and AI. And those are the backbones of the most interesting careers around right now. Now, if learning to program sounds intimidating, Brilliant meets you at your level and you can go at your own pace. Start off with drag and drop editors that let you code from the get-go. Brilliant is designed to be fun and get all that learning to stick. It's not memorization, but rather a chance to play with concepts and problem solve interactively. And that turns out to be six times more effective than watching video lectures. Before you know it, you'll be analyzing and generating text with Python. One step closer to building that passive-aggressive chatbot to automate text with your in-laws. Always great to see you, winky face, winky face. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash zayfrank or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Give it a look-see today. Brilliant has been a long-time sponsor of this show, and I'm a fan. Where were we? Oh, right. This oh sh now freeze response is actually quite common. I bet you've done it. See some jackass friend of a friend come round a corner. Oh sh now freeze. <laughs> Hope they don't see you. Just blend into the background. Like a deer caught in the headlights. Just gonna move you right over here. Rabbits, they're good at this sort of thing. 
Jenny, do we have to buy the footage for this? I mean, it's just standing still. Hold up there. Deer caught up in a light. Is that a real thing where deer basically sees lights come in with freeze up? I mean, where I live, I don't have deer issues on the road. Or like, that's a big ass issue. Like, in, you know, like Americas and like Canada and the country areas where deers can just walk up to the road. There must be places in India where that's an issue as well, but not where I live. So is that a real issue? Like if, it, they, if they say lights, they're like, oh, what is that light approaching? Just stay there. That is so fucked up. It's the point where you want them to move. You just assume a living thing would know something is coming and they'll move. That's, that's your intuitive thought. But that's opposite of that. So obviously you, th that makes sense that every time people hit deer, probably so, at least half of them must be that. Right? Oh, it's probably going to move. No, it doesn't. First of all, anything in front of me, I would slow down instantly. I'm, I'm surprised people just literally hit things. Even on highway, I see a lot of time. Somebody just like break down on highway and everybody just crashed behind. You shouldn't be at a speed that you can break and control. I mean, some, something instantly comes in forward, so it makes sense. But like, if something was really far ahead, you can see it stop. You have, you have to have control of your car. This is insane. You know, we could have done a photo. No, not now. Well, now we paid for the footage and the still. Damn it, Jerry. Even blind beach snails have the oh now freeze. Look at the little one. Bumps into a big predatory agaronia snail and just stops. It works. The big guy senses something but just lunges forward. Anyway, this freezing behavior is normally for when an animal has spotted a threat but still thinks it hasn't been detected. Which is a bit of a stretch for this opossum. <laughs> I mean, it's moving its head as you walk by. <laughs> But while frozen, the animal is still aware and quite in control, just waiting for a moment to escape. And this is quite a bit different from another defense that the opossum is famous for. You've heard of him. It's often called playing possum. Doesn't tell you much. <laughs> a bit self-referential. Sometimes it's... Jerry, that's a dog. Sometimes it's called playing dead, and it can certainly look like that. But it's just one example of something that happens all over the animal kingdom that the science hippies call tonic immobility. These animals aren't playing or pretending, though. This is an involuntary reflex. It's not really in their control. They stop moving, often in a contorted or death-like pose, unresponsive, and this lasts for seconds or up to an hour. It's usually triggered. I always assume that it's probably like shock, right? Imagine if you, if you were suddenly like face-to-face -face come with like a Bengal tiger. You probably would freeze in place, right? It's called shock. So maybe this is just shock equivalent of that. They're just like too shocked that their, their whole body freezes up, right? So they're just panicking, basically. It's not some kind of like uh, great defense or something. No, they just panic and just like drop dead or something, for, you know, like in shock or something. I don't know. By being royally f***ed, like if you're in someone's mouth or grabbed or restrained or turned upside down, or in the case of a chicken when it stares at a line, don't ask, and listen, this response does occasionally seem to help animals avoid death. For an insect, it can actually be part of an escape plan. If you're holding onto a leaf like this wood tiger moth and you suddenly go stiff, you drop to the underbrush and disappear. Same thing if you're flying. Pew! Unexpected. It also might change the calculus of an attack. Battles between ant colonies are usually many against many. So if a vulnerable soft skeleton juvenile fire ant keels over, its attacker has to move on to the next fight. There's no time to check to see if this one's faking it. And in the same vein, if you live in large groups, you can use this to throw your friends under the bus. If there's a bunch of you running around and the predator thinks you're immobilized, then it might try for some bonus snacks, giving you just enough time to get away. And stopping a predator from trying to immobilize you can be a huge step towards living another day. Many predators have these instincts to subdue struggling prey, like how a dog shakes violently to maybe break a neck. If you suddenly stop struggling, you might be able to stop the shaking too, or at least get it to tone down a bit. And tonic immobility often does seem to change a predator's behavior. Now, some animals, including the opossum, really seem to ham it up. Sometimes the mouth will be open or drool coming out. I mean, the hog-nosed snake should get a f***ing Oscar. And there's plenty of other excellent performances. And this has led to the idea that these animals are feigning death or somehow taking advantage of a predator's instinct not to eat long-dead animals. Adding to this is the fact that some of these animals right. would defecate. I don't know, like, it's surprising a way too many animals play dead like that. So I'm guessing it's just like most animals have this kind of a thing, right? I don't know. This, you know, every time you see the psychology of animals like that, it's always surprising, right? Even snake and something like that. I guess th this would work very less against something like predatory cats, right? Jaguar, tigers like that, lions, I don't know. Exude a gross-smelling substance. 
The opossum secretes something from there. But a predator would have to be especially stupid to think that an animal they were chasing a moment ago was now a long dead rotting corpse. It might just be that it's unappetizing because it's suddenly weird and gross. Or in some cases, like with this pygmy grasshopper, the pose that they get into makes it harder for a frog to eat them. However it works, it's a good... Or it could be just like instinct, right? Like their brain could not process long-term memory or something. So when they try to eat it, maybe they forget that they are the one... It is the one they hunted down. So if it's like dead, they, they, in their brain it's just like maybe it's not edible or something. It's not good to eat, so they just leave it or something. Trick. And if you have it, you might bring it out on other occasions. A number of animals seem to go into tonic immobility to avoid the advances of a potential mate. Playing dead is a near universal ick. In the case of this female frog here, it might actually save her life. Collections of horny males often get into a frenzy and form mating balls. Start it. And that can be deadly for a female. Now, even though these animals look completely unconscious, they do seem to be able to still process some aspects of the environment. Some will reduce the time that they're in this state if the threat has passed or if there's shelter nearby. And if they're lucky, eventually it's time to wake up. Often a bit groggy and out of sorts, on wobbly legs. You know, sometimes covered in shit, <laughs> stumbling back to the den <laughs> with some serious explaining to do. No, I didn't go to the bar last night. I'm telling you, there was a fucking dog. You're lucky to have me home at all. Fine, whatever. Sorry I'm late, all right? Now, how about a little makeup say? Oh, now you're playing dead. Great. <laughs> That's insane. But you were. I, I, I don't know. I guess I was at a bar because I'm not going to admit that I was like, I was a bitch and just played dead. There you go. Okay, even something like snakes doing that. I mean, obviously, every it's, it's a food chain, right? Everything has a predator. But it's something like snakes, you would think like this are like known as predators themselves they would not have something like play dead function but apparently they do right seriously how how high this thing goes like which are the which are the one you would not think play dead but also do something like big cats or something like do that do that wolves or something that would be insane right well that was true facts not dead opossums and their weird defenses playing opossum praying playing possum what is it called opossum is all silent i don't know this was a frank if you like my channel don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time